folks. Good. Well, it's, it's, it's good to be back in Pittsburgh. I was here uh, seven, eight years ago at uh, the University. You know, Pittsburgh, right? Wonderful town, wonderful people. Uh, so how are we feeling, folks? Good. Great. 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 Good. Well, you feel better by the time we finish tonight because this is uh, about healing, spiritual healing. Yeah. And you know what? The best part of it, unlike uh, medicine, healing for the spirit costs you nothing. You begin to feel better already, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's all about the mind. It's been ignored. Okay? The healing powers of the mind has been ignored and it's been known for thousands of years. You know? Um, one of the things that happened uh, in, West, in this Western world was, you know, a Greek by the name of Democritus, who came to Egypt and studied uh, with the priests, and he was taught about the divine principle of Atum, which he did not quite understand, and that's where the idea of the Atom came from. See the correspondence here there. And it was misrepresented, you know, as uh, the foundation of modern science and the separation of science from religion. You see that? Separation of healing from religion. Not understanding that uh, the religion that Democritus of Abdera separated from science was Greek religion, not religion itself. But that's all he knew. He knew Greek religion. If you take the time to study the theogony, okay, of you know ancient Greece, you will find that um, you will understand why Democritus and Plato and many other Greeks wanted to separate and distance themselves from Greek religion. As a matter of fact, um, most of you haven't even been taught anything about Greek religion. But yes, you have. So that's called Greek mythology. You see that? And the essence of the religion of Greek religion has become, you know, those, you know those TV series about Hercules? You know, and uh, you know the, the you know the the Titans fighting each other and things of that nature. But that was the pattern of Greek religion, okay? And yes, it was important to separate from that understanding of religion, but the problem is, is that other religions understood that, you know, religion is a cultivation of the mind and the spirit, which controls the body. You see that? Today, you know, illness is rampant in the world, isn't it? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Okay? And, um, in the past 3,000 years or so, there's information floating here and there about how the mind can be used, you know, to heal as a healing agent. But the thing is, is that it has not been systematized, you know, it has not been organized into a system so that you can take full advantage of it. You know, a little bits and pieces of information here and there. For example, uh, the double blind experiment, okay? Uh, here are scientists, you know, I mean, the hardest core scientists, okay, they're coming up with a new drug, okay, they've been studying it for 15 years, okay, and before they can have a drug approved by the German Commission or the FDA, they have to uh, test that drug through the double-blind principle and all the rigorous scientific, you know, methods and so on, and the double-blind means that when you test a drug, okay, you use a drug and a sugar pill, okay? And you have two groups of people. One received the sugar pill, one received the drug. The person administering the test doesn't know who, which person is getting the sugar pill or the drug. And the person that is being tested, they do not know whether they're getting the drug or the sugar pill. That's what's a double blind. And the reason for the double blind is that if you know that you were receiving the drug. Your mind 
will increase the effectiveness of the drug. You see that? Okay? All right? And people receiving the sugar pill, many of them believe it's a drug, and they also get healed by the sugar pill. But the most powerful part of it is the person administering the test. If they knew that they gave you the drug, then their minds will affect your body to heal. And I'm talking about scientists. I'm not talking about priests or magicians or Buddha men and women. I'm talking about scientists whose mind can affect others if they knew that they were giving somebody the drug. This is something that you need to really sit down and ponder as to why once the drug is um, passed by the FDA, why doesn't the bottle say, take two pills a day with your meals and do a meditation? You know? Or, and think positively. Or something like that, right? Okay? Or maybe take a pill and two prayers a day <laughs> so you don't have to call the doctor the next day. It's real. You see that? But how popular is it? You know, is it just simply, you know, uh, a minor agent? Is it, you know, something that, okay, so it, it affects healing, but uh, maybe it's just a minor thing that we can ignore, you know, not take into account. So I would like to share with you some of the things that have been known for thousands of years and has been, you know, studied and corroborated throughout, you know, the millennia up until today. Okay, so stress. When you speak to doctors in the Western world, traditional Chinese medicine, ancient Egypt, and so on, if there are different ways of speaking and presenting information, they all agree that stress is either a major cause of illness, and some will tell you it is the major cause of illness. You see that? Okay? All right? And that being so, and you know what stress is, right? We all know what stress is, right? We walk on I'm so stressed out, you know what I mean? So, um, maybe you might find out as we go along that you may not know quite so well what stress is. And most of the people supposed to know what stress is don't quite know what it is. Therefore, there is no organized you know, system for dealing with stress. If stress is a major or perhaps the major cause of illness, then now it behooves us that if somebody came up with a systematic approach to dealing with stress, you see, lots of people will be here. Right? The problem is, is that that's already been done several thousand years ago. So we are going back to the past. So it's not the future. We're going back to the past and recover something very beautiful, very useful. And, you know, and it's something that you can practice, put into your daily routine, and you will see it working for you. You know, the young man said, I've been doing this for 40 years. Yes, I've been doing it. Well, I've been doing it with others for 40 years. I've been doing it for 10 years by myself. You see that? And, you know, and I shared some division with people, and they wanted me to teach them and help them, and I was trying to run away from them, and they kept running after me and caught up with me, and I became a teacher. You see that? <laughs> That's how you become a spiritual leader. You, you know, uh, hey. Couldn't run fast enough. <laughs> so, uh, so if stress doesn't cause your illness, and don't get me wrong, it's not the only major cause of illness. Okay, because many of you make yourself sick by the things you eat. Oils, certain wrong oils and too much sugar and things of that nature and you know, uh, things that you know, you, you might be back again to talk about how food is killing you. <laughs> okay, and I might talk a little bit about it before we leave tonight, okay, because it's very important. But let's say that your illness came from above or from bad food or lack of exercise or sedentary living, okay? When you now 
you know, go to the health food store and you pile up, you know, on the vitamin C and your, you know, your, you know, glutathione and, you know, all these, you know, antioxidants, you know, and you're still not healing. It's because the stress is keeping you from healing. You see that? And we're going to stand how and why tonight. Can I go to the next slide? Okay? So I said that stress is not properly understood. Okay? Uh, Hans Selye and other you know, doctors you know, gave the world a definition of stress, okay, which is incorrect. And if you are trying to put science together to help people and you have the wrong concept, the wrong conceptual you know, angle on you know, uh, what you're trying to do, that method or whatever, you're not going to come up with the results you're looking for. And part of the uh, problem with stress is the concept of stressors. You see that? Okay? So let's go to the next slide. Please. All right? <clears> T.H. <throat> Ra and T.H. Holmes. Okay? Two scientists, two psychologists and doctors. In 1967 uh, came up with the um, what's called the Social Readjustment Rating Scale. Okay, which was published in the Journal of Psychosomatic Research. And um, <clears throat> I excerpted some information from that, from that scale. Okay, you can go and Google that scale. I give information, you want to take it, you know. I, I get a PowerPoint because we, this is school now. So you get a great this today? So you might want to write this down and Google it because that's some beautiful information in that social adjustment rating scale. I just excerpted four of, of uh, some 30 different statistical you know, information. And that adjustment scale is used by insurance companies, by industries, and things of that nature. And it's proven itself to be quite accurate. And what Mr. Holmes and Rob found out is that um, you know, the chances of so people becoming ill, there's almost a 100% chance of you becoming ill, people becoming ill following the death of a spouse. You see that? Spouse dies, the chance of people becoming ill is almost 100%, and the doctors will say it's a stress. You see that? Okay? 50 to 70 percent. People, you know, the 50 to 70 percent chance of becoming ill from divorce, separation. Uh, wait a minute. You know, I mean, I think you might get better after divorce. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a chance of getting sick. People are here like, oh, I'm getting this, washing this out of my hair and this. But out of that, and you get sick after the divorce and separation. I mean, this is statistics. This is not opinions or whatever. These guys spend a lot of years studying this thing here. You know, separation, incarceration, death of a close relative, personal injury or illness, marriage. Happy event. People get sick. percent <laughs> chance of getting sick for the loss of a job. Reconciliation. You know, you miss your honey so bad, okay? You, you got to get back together. And there's a, what, 30 to 40 percent that you will get sick after you get back together. Does it, you know what I'm saying? I want you to understand that stress is not properly understood once you really get into the scientific, you know, data on it. You see that? Pregnancy, new family members coming in, you know, Change in the frequency of sex relations. You know, financial state change, change in line of work, 